Next on MLR Weekly, Chicago Hounds head coach Sam Harris, fantasy Rutgers commissioner Ryan Yee, John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning, and the best dang recap in Major League Rugby. Yeah. Rugby wrap-ups MLR Weekly brought to you by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig & Whistle, New York City. The world's best rugby pub. And Lean and & Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. As presented by Rugby Wrap-Up, Matt McCarthy in New York City. Thank you for joining us once again. It's much appreciated. And a quick note before we get into our show, Brian Ray of America's Rugby News is unable to join us this week. He's taking care of some family stuff. We hope everybody's okay, and we see him next week. Our thoughts are with you, Brian. Uh, we have on the show this week, though, we have Sam Harris, the head coach of the Chicago Hounds. We have Ryan Yee, the commissioner of the Fantasy Rutgers League. We have the greatest recap in Major League Rugby history. We have our play of the week as per the Rugby Network. And we have our pick of the week, courtesy of the Rugby Odds. But before we get to any of that, we have our recurring segment, Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick. John, how are you? What do you got? Hey, Matt, I'm doing good. I'm looking good, too. I got a haircut. I waxed my back. It looks like you got your eyebrows plucked. We are looking like a spiffy number. Hey, you know what's looking good? How about the MLR standings? Through three weeks of play, there are only two teams remaining unbeaten. And guess what? Those two teams, the Houston Sabercats and the Seattle Seawolves, they're going to meet on Friday night at Starfire Stadium to kick off week four. Ooh-wee, Matt, are you going to stay up till 10 p.m. to watch that kickoff? Absolutely not. And they need to move that start time up. They need to do it at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. New York time. Make it a big deal. Call it Friday Night Lights. Sell the <laughs> out of it. And then we'll watch. But 1030? No. I don't get it. Next. Well, Matt, despite giving up 68 points, Anthem, RC, they did earn their first table point of the season. Virtue of their fourth try scored of the game, which was a penalty try that was awarded to them in that Dallas Jackals match. But Matt, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit about your conversation you had with USA Men's Eagles head coach Scott Lawrence. He was talking about developing domestic players, particularly fly ass. We know that Luke Hardy's kind of bouncing around there in Chicago. But outside of that, you know, you've got AJ McGinty over in the Premiership. What are we doing to, de to develop domestic American fly ass? Well, as you mentioned in the interview uh, on this very program, thank you for bringing it up, plug, plug, plug. He said that we now have in the U-20s five players that are at the 10 position, which is pretty much a first and a very, very good thing. And as you mentioned, we only have McGinty and really Luke Cardi, but Luke Cardi's not getting the nod in Chicago. We have Sam Harris waiting in the wings to come on this program, so I'll ask him about that. But um, I got an idea. You, got, you mentioned the anthem. Shane Barry is currently playing fullback. He can also play fly half. He's eagle uh, eligible. But Oscar Collar, who is currently playing fly half, could play 15. So you could flip those two and then double pretty much your, your professional fly halves that are currently starting. Next. Hey, Matt, let's talk about standout performers in week three. You got to start with New England Free Jacks fullback Reese McDonald. He caught it down again. His fifth. He leads MLR in try scores. How about Noel Gold Center? Jordan Jackson Hope. He scored two tries, as did the player of the week, Old Glory DC wing Axel Muller. He scored two tries in his MLR debut. You sound like an Old Glory fan, and you got reason to be a fan, but that confounded last 20 minutes where nobody scored and the, the, the Old Glory had the 10-minute penalty to patty ryan at the end of the game and still couldn't muster up the points that had to be frustrating it certainly was frustrating jason robertson missed a couple makeable kicks that i think he would like to have back but matt i think the biggest news of the week regarding old glory dc has got to be the disciplinary decision that's going to be coming down from mlr regarding ogdc back row and captain jameson fan on the schultz he received a red card in that game on a dangerous play against chicago hounds billy meeks 
Uh, Gemma, he well, suspended 10 games in 2022, not at all last year in 2023. Since then, he has been a model citizen, but Matt, you know, he awaits a verdict on whether or not he'll miss multiple games. And I've got to ask you, Matt, if he were to miss multiple games, that's going to have a big impact on Old Glory and the rest of their season. I, it will have an impact, but I think that they are, uh, for the first time, a deeper team, and they might be able to uh, navigate that. But, you know, Vatan on Schultz is going into that court, and he's got a record. Whether You know, whether his probation had ended, you still have that lingering. So, you know, this that news will come out after the show is taped. Next. Hey, I want to move on to some quick player news. Two things I want to announce. RFC LA, they signed Brazilian international and former New York iron worker, prop slash hooker, Wilton Riabolo, to a three-year deal, Matt. That's pretty big news. He's back in MLR. He's a great pickup because he can play all three front row positions and you won't lose anything with it. And he's a great guy in the clubhouse. He's one of my favorites. I got to know him here in New York. Sorry to see him go, but it's great to see him come back after some success overseas. A great pickup. Next. Hey, how about the Houston Sabercats? They signed 20-year-old American back row Aiden Kerr from their academy team. Houston making a commitment to play young American talent. Kerr is going to join his teammate. You may recall 18-year-old Seth Smith, who made his MLR debut a few weeks ago. Good on Houston for making that signing. Good on Houston for making that signing, and I'm loving the fact that people are going to those games, and they've got an exciting team to watch. So Houston Sabercats fans, you have no excuses. Get your asses out to that stadium. Next. Matt, in other rugby news in Super Rugby Americas, American Raptors, they nabbed their first win of the season, a 29-21 win over the Cobras. They placed three players on the first 15, including fullback Rufus McQueen. You may recall transferred from Scotland. Matt, big deal for the Raptors. Yeah, you know, get that first W under your uh, belt. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta win one to win two, right? So, and they beat Brazil, which is always good. Those Cobras. Next, Matt. You probably saw World Rugby. They revealed some new plans to help speed up the game. They got a number of changes here. You're a curmudgeon. Which one do you not like? I don't. I'm not crazy about the uh, calling mark on restarts. In other words, you kick off you can just call mark and that just stops the play it stops the flow it also you know it, it, it defeats the purpose of speeding up the game and, and for, for what they're doing across the board for the most part and they're also going to implement the mlr scrum half protective rule or they're talking about it at least and that happens in may next matt one last thing shout out to cal they beat number one navy over the weekend Navy's first loss since April 2022. Quite a run for the midshipmen. Matt, that's all I got. We're not done with you, though, John, because we have a special segment today. We have Fantasy Rutgers Commissioner Ryan Yee coming in to join you and me to have a little bit banter about what's going on with this corrupt and often controversial Fantasy Rutgers League. And now it's time for the best recap in Major League Rugby history with yours truly. In New England, the smartest scheduling in Major League Rugby history took place last weekend as they did not schedule a game on St. Patrick's Day in Boston. Instead, they had it on Saturday, which meant everybody could party without guilt. Ironically, NOLA were the sinners, earning a yellow just six seconds into the match but the Free Jacks failed to capitalize on the sin binning, followed by Nola missing a gimme penalty goal. But the gold cashed in when, here he scores now, say Philomone. Hey, take the train, not the bus, scored for Team Big Easy. But the Free Jacks came right back, cashing one in via, wait for it, an online Vanderbank. Cha-ching! Then Reese stopped calling me Damian McKenzie McDonald, turned Nola into gold dust with his 57th stunning try of this short season. Another record. Nola will rue this one as they blew a two-try lead and left points on the board with missed kicks. 27-21 New England. 
A stone's throw from where they actually throw stones in Congress. Old Glory DC and the Chicago Hounds christened DC's new home, the Maryland Soccerplex in Germantown. And while we didn't have anybody named Schnell on either roster to have some fun with, we did have a captain named Fatanana Schultz, along with the likes of a boomer, Axel Flesh and Gross. A brace, that's two tries, folks, each from Boomer and Muller, excited the excellent crowd. But deceiving wins played tricks on the home team's sure-footed fly half, Jason Robertson. Those misfires, aforementioned Captain Fatanana Schultz, getting a worrisome red card, which unofficially could mean a six-game suspension, and a scoreless final 20 minutes had both teams dancing with their sisters. That means a tie, kids. 22-22 final. In Space City, we had foul play, which disallowed Houston's first try, but they came right back on a fortuitous quick tap and followed that one while the Sharks were shorthanded via a yellow card. But the Floridians wouldn't quit, and the match wasn't over until Houston scored at death, giving them the five-point bonus win and sending a formidable Miami team home with nothing. 30-19 final, and that's foul as in poultry. In Utah, the Warriors and Seawolves locked horns in another one of those tough Western Conference matchups. After conceding three points to Joel Hudson on a penalty goal, Seattle controlled the match and kept the Mountain Men wanting more space. But Jesse Hamilton set up Phil Bradford for a Warrior try at death, giving Utah a shot at an important losing bonus point. Hudson yabba dabba dude his way to the tee from a very difficult angle only to see his attempt clank off the posts in the 83rd minute. No point, no cigar, this time. Hudson will make that kick many times over. 23-13 final. On the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field, the, what, 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 wait, what? Ah, wrong screen. To sunny Southern California and the Battle of the Five Freeway. San Diego and LA renewed their MLR rivalry with cohorts guzzling Giltinis and everyone waiting for Gitto. I know it's Gitto. On the pitch, Dan Hollinshead gave RFCLA replica the early three zip lead. Indeed, they padded the lead to 8 0, but an uncharacteristic misconversion and careless ball handling just before the half would prove costly as the Legion chipped away behind Lincoln McVery Clutchy to take the lead. James Stokes got LA back within one point with one minute left, but the Legion held on. 1918 final. Finally, at American Legion Memorial Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina, the home team anthem and the Dallas Jackals went at it in different shades of blue. It's not every day that you score 28 points at home before another good home crowd and still lose by 40. But indeed, it was the day of the Jackals, as 10 players scored a try apiece. And Martin Eliash continued his excellent play, 68-28 final. Whew. Digs like a demented mole there. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. You need your cleats, you need them tomorrow. If you order today by 3 p.m. New York time or noon LA time, they can have them to you tomorrow. Young, old, male, female, if you're playing on turf, if you're playing on grass, if you're playing in the rain, you're playing in the heat, they've got you covered. RugbyNow.com, go there now. And John, now it's time to bring in Mr. Ryan Yee, the commissioner of Fantasy Ruckers. Ryan, welcome to MLR Weekly. What, what's up, fellas? It's uh, good to finally be on the show. We've uh, we've heard a lot of you guys. We obviously watch from a distance, but it takes some uh, uh, big cojones to, to bring me on the show after what you guys haven't been experiencing in the world of fantasy uh, MLR here on the Fantasy All right, let, Let's not jump ahead yet, <laughs> just Mr. Mr. Commissioner. Yeah. Let's explain to the folks at home what <laughs> Fantasy Ruckers is. 
Yeah, well, Fantasy Ruckers is an attempt uh, by us here to try to make fantasy rugby a reality in the MLR. It's been something that we've been working on for the past several years. This this season that we're in right now uh, was the first time that we've been opened it up to uh, kind of a, a group of public people here. So we've had uh, had uh, Fitzy here on our on our squad here for quite some time. Matt, you came on board here uh, last season, and it's been a fun ride here into uh, to what is our now third season of fantasy rugby in MLR. And now we can bring people up to speed as, a, you know, rugby wrap-ups in this fantasy Rutgers league, mm -hmm. rugby morning. I don't know, you know, John's got his representation in there. I owe you and all of Canada, because you're Canadian, mm -hmm. uh, I owe you all an apology. Because when I was on your program, mm -hmm. I said A, B, C, anybody but Canada, right? <laughs> And it's it, because it was following up on ABE, anybody but England. But I got to apologize because ABC is always beat Canada. It's not oh, anybody yeah. but Canada. <laughs> okay. Is that is that oh. so? That's you know that's a bold statement for the guy that's sitting right now last in our fantasy rockers. Oh. Okay. okay, okay. You know, so right now technically uh, Canada's beating you, Matt. So obviously uh, you don't know the history of fantasy rugby. Did you know that the 1997 Roger that Clintons? The 2004 Royds Rocket Clemenses and the 2014 Doogies Hosers were all 0-3 to start their fantasy <laughs> rugby leagues and yet went on to win the championship. Did you know that? <laughs> How can other people get involved in this? Um, I mean, right now, uh, all of our leagues, uh, at least for our season long leagues, are what you would think of as traditional fantasy uh, kind of uh, MLR where you draft a team. That has been up close. So you want to get in the waiting list here to sign up for the uh, 2025 season. But hey, if you wanted a little bit of a taste of how fantasy MLR goes, you can uh, try our weekly challenge. You pick up a salary of $15. You have uh, We have players that are valued based on their 2024 fantasy fantasy performances you try to pick a five-man lineup that fits that salary and see where you uh, stack up with the fantasy scoring that we use i'd like to say i'd like to point out as a little disclaimer i'm absolutely tearing it up in the weekly challenge right now uh 30 points uh in the in the lead right now over over my brother so uh, i think our expertise goes to show itself ryan you and your brother have put in an, imme an immeasurable amount of work to get this thing off the ground people you don't understand this ain't easy and they're doing it on their own dime and their own time and it's actually very cool well done sir no i i greatly appreciate it. i mean fitzy was there right at the get-go when we were on our excel spreadsheet days um and uh we were literally uh tallying up uh some stuff while me spending my saturday and sunday evenings without a life just literally watching games and counting tackles and counting uh passes uh and and meters so uh we've long past days we've we've upgraded a little bit uh we have a website now the fantasyruckers.com even if you're not a league member you can go on there and check out uh some of our uh, our nice fantasy stats that we got on there uh it's been it's been a fun journey i want to give a shout out to alistair kirschpool uh fitzy knows him well uh co-host on the glorious rugby podcast um, he's been a huge help with our website and also got to give a shout out to our, our third host as well. Devin Vandy Vanderpool. He's been our, uh, guinea pig in terms of what fantasy MLR is supposed to bring, teach people the sport, get people involved in rugby in North America. And, uh, Vandy has grown a lot, uh, from not knowing the sport at all to now being what we would say, a pretty good expert. All right. On that note, I want to thank Mr. Ryan, Yee, the commissioner of the fantasy Rutgers league and Mr. John Fitzpatrick of rugby morning. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Sam Harris, the head coach of the Chicago Hounds. I wouldn't like to be at the bottom of that. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. This is the Rugby Odds, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? fans 
you can tune into every match live on Flow Rugby. How do we know that? Because we're on there all the time. And we are back with Sam Harris, the head coach of the Chicago Hounds. Sam, welcome back to MLR Weekly. Thanks, Matt. Always a pleasure and an honor to be on this show. You have the best center in the league playing fly half in Billy Meeks, right? I know that you were an athlete that could play multiple positions in a rugby mm -hmm. match, rugby league, union, whatever. I think just, just on this one, you know, we spoke to – um, Billy, just the, the the way that I saw his game going, you know, uh, getting a little bit older in the tooth as well. Um, plus, just his communication and his and his calmness under pressure. Uh, I think it lended to him moving to ten. I think he's got a good good passing game, kicking game uh, is adequate, but we don't really need it with our game plan as much. You know, he's four games into his transition and, and I think he's doing a really good job I think Billy attends a, a, a great uh, addition for us you know getting one of the best players in the league getting him more touches than than not so so that was the reason for my decision my ambition to, to keep him there and to give him a, an actual crack at it rather than you know practice a preseason for five weeks and then um, and then only give him two goes at it so yeah you got your home opener if I'm not mistaken coming up and it's against the the reigning champs so it doesn't get any easier for you guys. Do you feel any pressure with this match? Yeah, we got we got the reigning champs at the stadium where they won the championship last year. So it's it's obviously a place of um, good vibes for them, and, and they'll be looking to come home, come back to this stadium. And it, as you said, we've played three away games to start the season. Every game has been another team's home opener and uh, season opener. And we're really looking forward to coming back to our fans and putting a really good performance. As you said, it's a tough assignment against a really good New England team, um, but they're not unbeatable, you know, and, and I think we're slowly building towards, um, you know, the game plan that we want to play in our DNA. And and then on top of that, you know, I think speaking to the, your question about pressure, you know, we're, we're one, one, and one at the moment. And yeah, yeah, there is pressure, but that's that's the kind of, pressure that I, that I revel in and, and so does this team and, and we're really looking forward to the challenge. I, I, I can't imagine what your what your head was where you're where you're going in your head during the last moments of the Miami match. That, that, that had to be <laughs> oh my god I'm I'm sitting watching the game and I'm like I, I can't take this. It, yeah that had, it, it, that had to be tough. tough and you were sitting on your couch yeah. with a roof over your head. I was like a, I was drenched in rain and, and hoping that I get, didn't get hit by lightning. But um, fair play, fair play to Miami. They came out and really gave it to us, and they've, they've done so to every team. And 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 they're a really good team. Had a really good four pack. Very very confrontational, and um, and they bring it. Yeah, in the dying stages, we were. I thought we should have had the game wrapped up by then. I think if a couple of refereeing decisions went our way, we probably would have. Um, but we didn't, and we and we came away with a win with a lot of adversity in terms of lots of things didn't go our way that day, and um, yeah, with the with the kickoff being delayed, and we had a yeah, there was a lot of things, but we we came away with a win, four points, and, and pretty happy with the effort. So you know we've got some geography to cover in the United States. A lot of folks overseas don't get the travel aspect of this, yeah. and the length of the season is sixteen matches in the regular season. Do you weigh in attrition into going into the lineup or do you, do you have to treat every single game as though you have to, we, we have to put our best side out for this one or do you, what's your philosophy on that? Great question. I think um, we probably underestimated going from Miami then to Utah, Salt Lake City the, the next week. And we, we tried to lighten the load of the, of the week, but I, don't, I just don't think we got it right. And we came out a bit flat against Utah, probably a game we should have win, but didn't. And, uh, and, you know, that kind of put us in a position where then we go to DC, who just beat New England. So we've got to put our best team against them. Then we're coming up against New England, the former champs. And then we've got Seattle straight after that. So, and then we've got Nola, who's, who's looking like a really good team as well. Um, pro probably one of the form teams of the comp so far with a very strong scrum. So I think all things considered, we need to, uh, yeah, we need to go into all of those games uh, with our best team and put our best foot forward, and then and then after that we could maybe come up for air and 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 go into the our bye week in, in week nine, um, freshening up. But but yeah, for the next four weeks we have to we have to put our best foot forward.
And you mentioned D.C. I think you have to kind of be relieved almost to come out of there with the tie and the points because you had the late sin binning with, with Patty Ryan. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, that you're coming, coming out on the road with a, with a tie, that's, that's not so bad. Yeah, nobody wants to have a draw. and It never feels as good as it should, really. But um, but coming out, that, that DC team is a serious team. They've got a, a very good coach, very good forward back. They definitely know who they want to do, who they want to be and what they're trying to achieve. And yeah, coming away from three games with, with six points on the table is not a bad result. Well, now you're 1-1-1. One, one, and one. You know, again, we mentioned that earlier, but that's a good start to the season specifically for a team that's starting three games on the road. You're coming home now. What's the style of play, would you say, if you have one that Chicago fans can look forward to? Yeah, like I think we want to embody what Chicago people like to see, and I think that's a that's a tough, gritty, in-your-face rugby team. And, and I think we've got more – more cattle to do that with than we had last year and I think we've got we've got a really good forward pack um, we've got a very good set piece we haven't got rewarded for that set piece in the first three games like, like we probably should have and I thought we would have um, but I think once we start to establish uh, our dominance in the forward pack then things will open up for the backs and, and we do have speed to burn on the edges so um, yeah, I think a, a tough, gritty team that, that loves to get amongst it up front, and, and you'll come away from SeatGeek Stadium licking your wounds because you and, and you probably don't want to come back here next year. What are your expectations? At the very least, I want to put us in a position to, to be there in the finals, and then you know, then anything can happen. Obviously, uh, attrition, like injuries, play a role, but so do referee decisions, all that stuff. But as long as as long as we've um, giving ourselves a chance to, to compete at, at the final stage, and I'll be, I'll be happy with that. All right. Sam Harris, welcome to spring, and thank you for coming on. Thanks, Matt. Always a pleasure, mate. And now for our Major League Rugby Play of the Week, brought to you by the Rugby Network. In Quincy, Massachusetts, the Free Jacks tarnished the Gold's record, but New Orleans salvaged a key losing bonus point with as difficult a conversion you can make by Reese Bota after an exciting 80-meter try put down by Jordan Jackson Ho. Looking for that lost oh, bonus I think he's point. got it. The anthem getting their fourth try to win their first ever point on the MLR standings board. History means something here. The Sabercats clawing their way to a try on the final play and snatching the five bonus point win, keeping them perfect at 3-0 in the ultra-competitive West. And the Major League Rugby Play of the Week brought to you by the Rugby Network is... Reese Bota's conversion up in Quincy, giving Nola the losing bonus point in what will be a very tight Eastern Conference. Now it's time for our TRO, the Rugby Odds, MLR Pick of the Week with WWE Hall of Famer turned rugby advocate John Bradshaw Layfield and King Gift A. Beilu, the inventor of words. I think Seattle at home uh, is almost unbeatable. And so I'm going to take Seattle over those good old boys from Texas. I got to take a look at that Dallas versus gold game. Of course, I'm going to pick the gold. Shocker, shocker, shocker. Gold putting their stake down inside Dallas. On that note, we are out of time. I want to thank John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning, Sam Harris of the Chicago Hounds, Ryan Yee of the Fantasy Ruckers, and thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other shows, including the critically acclaimed The Rugby Odds, the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. Tell a friend about us. And please join our American Red Cross blood donor team.